listen to this. A man was detained in Paris yesterday, accused of damaging various paintings at the Louvre with a bottle of sauce. Which paintings? Didn't your brother want to do that once? Except it wasn't sauce, was it? Which paintings? Hmm? Um, no, it doesn't say. Well, he must have been drunk. No, not necessarily. It would depend on the paintings. Mm -hmm. When questioned, he claimed diplomatic immunity and said his wife was an epileptic. I can't pronounce his name. Take the Mona Lisa, for instance. Quite a stupid smile, really. Grinning at everyone like that through the years. Depressing. A halo of ketchup would go there, fine. You're not listening to me. Hmm? You are not listening. Oh, well, I suppose that's fair. You're reading and I'm talking and that's always annoying. But, Lordy, you're never listening. When I open my mouth, you close your mind. Not deliberately, Joe, I'll give you that. You're not a deliberate person, really. You're but it up, seems darling. to me I'm that... trying to read. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you think to yourself, what shall I really do today? Don't you do that sometimes? I do. But I can never think of anything. Nothing really new. It's all been done before and nothing worth repeating. So, this morning, do you know what I said to myself? Now, this will really shake you, Joe. I said to myself, Clive, old son, this morning you are going to go stark, raving mad. Mad, Joe, no two ways of saying it, like a hatter. And you know something, for the first time in, I don't know how long, really, I began to feel a little less unhappy. Now, that's funny, isn't it? What? Oh, of course, I thought I was joking with myself at first. Wrong thinking, I wasn't. I was actually taking myself quite seriously. Yeah. Clive, what are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you. I'm talking about only having two days out of seven to myself, about feeling more lonely with every extra person I meet, of having to smile at your sister over lunch tomorrow because really she hates me, and of wondering how to spend the next ten seconds before I start breaking up this place and everything in it. Oh, God, we're in one of those moods, are we? Saint Sardonic. Do you know, your sense of humour is just not funny at times. I mean, why can't you warn us all by hanging out some flag of a smile or something? Hmm? Just so we miserable outsiders can realise what we're in for. Joe, I'd get out now if I were you. I realised this morning in the bathroom... Um, um, we're out of toothpaste, by the way. No, we're not. We just won't look, will you? I realise. Well, as I put it in your hand, squeeze no, the tube... Oh, no, the other You know, the real thing, no poncing about. Well, I realised, Joe, that I, I classify you with the furniture. Mm. Sort of functional. Well, I'm sorry about that. It's not my fault, really, sort of natural evolution. And so, you see, with all that going on in the old nut, you are likely to get thrown in with the rest of the wooden inhabitants of the Open Plan Lounge and the hopelessly uncomfortable diner for two. Now, have you thought of that? Clive, yeah. I'm going to finish reading my paper. You're going to shut up, and then we'll go back to bed, if you like. I'm sorry about last night. We did get back late. Well, I'm sorry. Am I forgiven? Oh, absolutely. Good. I suppose. Well, that'll be the tablets. I meant about the hospital, about going there at all. Not said much. Well, it's voluntary, isn't it? Oh, it really is for the best, Clive. I spoke to the doctor for quite a while. He feels if they can give you a complete rest, under experienced care, then, well... Then I'll be cured? Well, yes. I'm sorry. But it's not something you have to apologise for. I know that now. I just didn't realise strain you were under. You always joking. You seemed happy enough. I just didn't realise, that's all. No, I meant that I'm sorry you think I need curing.
Common and uncommon in relative terms, Mrs. Pickett. Though I quite understand your concern, of course. Uh, whilst on the one hand, I could say that your husband's breakdown is... Uh... Oh, yes. Yes, I think we must assume that, by the way. This is a reasonably common occurrence. See, each case, taken purely on its own terms, must be considered uncommon, in the sense that each patient is unique in his need to be understood. What I really meant, Doctor, was do you consider my husband capable of being, well, helped? Well, if I answer yes to that, and uh, oh. I will, uh, you must allow me the provisor of some unknown factor that always lies at the back of this sort of situation. Uh, behind the scenes, in the uh, shadow, as it were, Mrs. Figgins. No, you must allow us leeway. No, Dr. Millam, will I get my husband back? Only if he wants to come, Mrs. Speaker. I really can't say more. Hey, uh, do come in. Oh, please sit down. Mm -hmm. well, the, uh, the general view is that... Uh, oh, uh, do you mind if I spoke? Uh, the general view is that we come into this world uh, a human blank, you know, mere outline. It's like some uh, figure in a child's painting book. But I take the reverse view, that we arrive fully coloured, you know, alive to all the possibilities. It is only the, the gradual and systematic application of our environment that robs us of that colour, yes, thus making us increasingly void as the years roll by. I'm sorry, Doctor, but what has that really to do with my husband? What I meant was, instead of being so general, do you think you could be more personal about Clive? What is the problem? Well, I haven't seen your husband yet, of course, but uh, I imagine his condition is common enough. Mrs. Pickett. Stress, pressure, you know, these evil twins of modernity you know, build up to what confronts us now. But he never seemed the type. Well, if only there were actual types, you know, my life would be so much easier. No, uh, unfortunately, you know, we're all the type. It is only the combination of circumstance that leads us to the brink that differs. You know, what might amuse one man, for instance, might push another into abject despair. Well, it's uh, unfathomable, really. Will you be wanting to ask me any questions? Oh, yes, yes, eventually. A little early days, yes, I think. No, I'll see your husband first. Uh, probably tomorrow, and then uh, we can take it from there. Well, how long? How long, do you think? Well, it's difficult to say. Impossible, really. You know, too many factors to make snap judgments. But, uh, yes, I'm optimistic. He seems a basically balanced sort of chap. Hopeful. Well... Same time next week, if convenient. This might be something to report then. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Uh, Mrs. Pickett, keep active. Active. That's the key to a lot, you know. I don't actually have to get in, do I? Not for the moment. Down the hatch, Mr. Piggott. What is it? Let's not be asking questions all the time. I just wanted to know how it would make me feel, that's all. Better, of course. Mr. Piggott, I can't get on with my work until I see you swallow that tablet. Now, if I don't get my work done, I'm for the high jump from sister. Is that what you want? Oh. Leave your clothes on the chair. Any chance of a cup of tea? Later, if you're good.
new, aren't you? New as they come. What's that then? Hmm? What's the problem? Well, I'm mad. Oh, Christ. A bloody comedian. Haven't you seen a shrink yet? No, I just arrived. I'm supposed to be settling in. Have a walkabout, they said. That your wife with old Millam? I thought she'd left. She said goodbye anyway. I thought... Look, don't think, mate. It's dangerous. Just follow your nose and you'll get out of this bin in one piece. What's your name? What's yours? I asked first. What's today? The 21st. No, the day. Wednesday. And it's Yvonne. Is that your real name? It is today. And tomorrow? No, I change it every day. Why? Well, why shouldn't I? You change your clothes, don't you? Why not your name, eh? Look, it's only a label. Nobody means it. I just call you that. Anyway, I'm Clive, all the year round. They'll soon put a stop to that. You'll be wishing that you were someone else. Tom would suit you. You look like a Tom. I'm nothing like a Tom. Yeah, but Tom's different, isn't it? Not a Clive, is it? Eh? Not a toppy-nosed old Clive. So who's barmy for wanting to change her name, eh? I'm gonna call you Tommy. You want to know why I'm in here, then? A couple of nights back, I was arrested running a muck in a laundrette. Ealing Broadway, it was. I had this tip-off that it was the centre for some local witchcraft coven. Go on. Well, all these people meet at midnight after the tubes have stopped in the laundrette and exchange dirty washing. And before you can even mutter past the bleach, start unmentionable goings-on with a spin dryer. Now, oh, bullshit. No, no, it's true. Now, if it hadn't been for a very timely park cut, I don't know what I would have done. You know, I take grave exception at being asked to change a fuse in the middle of an orgy. Especially when you're on your final rinse. <laughs> <laughs> you are bloody mad. <laughs> mm. What are you doing here, anyway? You're a girl. Oh, not as balmy as you look, are you? Maybe they got the wrong guy. This is a conservatory, see? Neutral ground-like. Oh, you mean they don't segregate the sexes? Segregate? Sounds like something you do to a salad. Kept apart in the walls, aren't we? Except for a bit of socialising, like. But I'm special, see? This is therapy for me. I go for a little walk about. And when I get back, they say to me, where have you been? All concerned, like. They couldn't give a sod, really. Just that I have to go down in somebody's book, see? Anyway. I say I've been for a little walk about, and I'm feeling so much better for it. And I sort of stretch out my arms and put a soppy look on my face like this, ecstatic-like, as if the pills are really working. Jesus, that sends them scuttling. I dare say there's a file somewhere with some bull about how beneficial it is for me just to walk about. Suits, really. The shrinks think they're getting somewhere. And I get the keys to the bin. Of course, I'm not allowed to consult. Not in your zip fastener sort of way. No, no, consulting's out. Taboo. That's a word you'll hear a lot of in here. Taboo. Sounds like deodorant, doesn't it? <laughs> Mind you, I must admit there are times when I'd be quite partial to a bit of the old consulting. So if you ever feel the old you-know-what coming on, remember it's either me or the nurses, and they've got minds like bleeding chastity belts. You're not backwards in coming forwards, are you? Just as well, isn't it? There's a limit to how much you can sublimate with basket work and bleeding crochet. Sublimate is another word for you. They even count the needles after, you know. I always bend mine. I tell them it's for sewing round corners. 
I dare say there's a file on that somewhere too. Feels the need to sew round corners. The obvious diagnosis being that she's just about the battiest bitch that ever embroidered a tea cosy. <laughs> I like you, Yvonne. Uh-oh, what have I said now? Oh, come on. Now, surely liking someone isn't taboo. You'll learn. Hey, listen, Tommy. If you're good, I'll show you how you can stay in here forever. Well, I thought the object was to get out. You speak for yourself. I went to a lot of trouble to get in here. Not as easy as all that, you know. It's tricks of the trade. Oh, what sort of tricks? All sorts. Like learning to swallow your water without taking the pill. And claiming you're normal just loud enough to convince them that you're not, see? All sorts. God, you're green, aren't you? I can see I'm going to have to take you in hand. Yeah, but I'm not sure that I want to stay. Anywhere else you got in mind, then? Oh, maybe? No, not particularly. Work, then? No. See? Hey, look, how would you like to know what actually happened, eh? Just for a laugh. No. No? Why ever not? Because I'm not interested in what actually happens to people. Only what they wish would happen. That's why not. OK. Yeah. OK. Fine. All tests so far quite negative. That's good. It's not bad. It's just that negative sounds so well. Negative. It means physically at least you're in good shape. Well, perhaps I shouldn't be here then. Quite a healthy specimen, actually. Physically at least. Now we've cleared those decks, we can move on. Oh, it's beginning to get exciting. Hmm. I know how you feel. I'm so glad. Any recurring headaches? No. None at all? You did say recurring. Yes. No. Double vision? No. Dizziness? Sometimes. When I get out of the bath. Tightness around the chest? I don't think so. Is there anything else you feel you'd like to talk to me about? No, not really. Do you tire easily? Yes, I suppose I do. What times of the day do you feel most tired? In the morning, when I first wake up. It's boredom, you know, nothing else. You find life boring? Oh, don't you? I find it very interesting. Well, it's the interesting things that I find most boring of all. In publishing, I believe. A large cog in a small machine. What sort of books do you publish? You mean that might have some bearing on my mental state? Good backlist stuff, mainly. The sort of thing you'd find on your friendly neighborhood bookshop if there were any left. Might I know any of the titles, perhaps? You might. A mole free lawn in three weeks. The ABC of yodeling. Tree surgery, made simple. They don't ring any bells, I'm afraid. Teach yourself campanology? No. Your wife, does she work? She's heavily into the charity game. Social work, you mean? I dare say. Nothing very personal about it. It's some organisation somewhere doing something for yet someone else. You know, the sort of thing. Do you share her commitment? I'd probably be hard-pressed to find it, actually. Hobbies, then. What? Do you have any hobbies? No. Oh, I watch television. Does that count? Do you enjoy it? No. Why do you do it, then? Well, I suppose it stops me from thinking. Everything comes to a halt, prolaxed by the programme. It's a great comfort, really. I wouldn't be without it. 
No, I don't enjoy it. You have a favorite program? I like the ones where my wife has to say to me, but I thought he was in love with the other one. Or, uh, didn't we see her in that Walt Disney thing about the dolphin that rode a bicycle? That sort of thing. Why? Why what? Why do you enjoy that sort of program? Ah, oh, because then I can feed her back the wrong information. It brightens up the evening. Yes, she was in love with the dolphin, but it wasn't a bicycle. It was an antique bedstead called Herbie. Any weakness in the arms or legs? At those times, you mean? I feel pretty weak all over, actually, most of the time. You're only five foot seven, Mr. Piggott. Only? You mentioned it to a nurse. Does it matter? I told her that it was above average height for a Welshman. Are you Welsh? No. Does it cause you any embarrassment? Not being Welsh. Oh, come on, you know what I mean. I'm referring to your height. I suppose you mean with women. If you like. No, I don't think so. I always tell them we can cut their legs off just below the knees to compensate. Technically possible, eh, Doc? Not very available on the old national health, I grant you, but just between you and me, I know a struck-off vet that would do just about anything for a chance to play blow football with Clay Dunaway. Oh, the only other solution, of course, is only to meet in the horizontal position. A great leveller, that. Mind you, it's only really on for right little ravers and blokes who go in for deep breathing exercises. You always like this. You want me to say, like what, don't you? Wishing to appear rather trivial. Rather shallow. Uncaring. Yes, I think so. It's only when I'm happy that I am serious. And when are you happy? Have you ever heard of Rabindranath Tagore? He was a cellist or something, wasn't he? He was an Indian poet. Do you know what he said most saddened him when visiting Europe for the first time? He said it wasn't so much that people were unhappy that saddened him, but the fact that they didn't realize that they were unhappy. No, I don't think that I am sensitive about my height. I know I always buy those shoes with the built-up heels, but that is just fashion, isn't it? I wouldn't be at all surprised if even you didn't have a pair tucked away somewhere. I mean, one has to be realistic about it. You can't expect a girl to put up with you standing on a box all the time, however small, can you? And besides, there'd be the problem of getting around, on casters, presumably. Oh, but I bet there'd be some bylaw somewhere messing it all up. Section 5, paragraph 2, the prevention of cohabitation while standing on an egg carton act. Well, I think we'll leave it there for today, Mr. Pickett. I had a feeling you'd say something like that. I brought you these. Well, it seemed a bit pointless, really, but one has to go through the motions, I suppose. That's okay. I like Greg. How do you feel? Well, difficult to say. Better? Better than what? Oh, for God's sake, you're not in one of those moods, are you? Sorry. They keep giving me pills, not much else. Well, have you seen Dr. Millen yet? I've seen them all. They ask their questions, but nothing much seems to come of it. Well, I expect they discuss it amongst themselves. Well, you think they'd discuss it with me, really? It's been ten days. How are you really keeping, Clive? I feel so looked at. Do you know, Joe? I bet they could tell you how many times I've picked my nose. Oh, God, Clive, please don't say that. You know how I hate it. Sorry. Joe, do you think that there's something wrong with me? Well, 
I'm obviously there's something. I mean, you wouldn't be here otherwise, would you? Well, I might. You're here and there's nothing wrong with you. Just because I'm stuck on this particular spot does not make me potty. Look, Clive, you know what I mean. I wouldn't take it for granted. Well, you could hardly call your behaviour normal, could you? Breaking up the kitchen. Oh, that. Well, isn't that enough? What do you mean to say you've never felt like doing something like that? No, of course well, not. Never. No. No, well, perhaps you haven't. All right then, Joe. let me explain it to you slowly then. Now, look, when I was smashing away the kitchen, when I was at it, I felt as if I was sane. I felt elated, clear-headed, well, call it what you like, but I was happy. Now, if that was mad, it means that I have to get to that point each time I want to be happy. Which also means, at least in my case, they lock me away each time I succeed. Clive, what are you saying? Happiness isn't madness. Oh, well, what is it then? Well, I'm happy, aren't I? You never seem very happy to me. Contented at most. Well, I had everything I ever wanted with oh, you. But that is not quite the same thing now, is it? Clive, I don't expect you to be completely rational about this. You know you've been under a strain and it's been going on for some time. I dare say a good part of it was my fault. I have to admit, I can't quite see it that way at the moment. But it has to be really, doesn't it? It stands to reason. Joe, it was not your fault. The real strain was simply the effort involved in staying unhappy. I could have done something about it a lot sooner. I chose not to. But when people are happy, really happy, I'm not the colour supplement version, they do mad things, haven't you noticed? I mean, kids behave as if they're crazy all the time. They talk to themselves and um, act like little dervishes in supermarkets and laugh at nothing. And besides the old clout round the ear from above, nobody questions them. But if I start leaping through the park, scattering leaves through my hair because suddenly I am delirious about what autumn has done to the world, I am suspect. Now, what sense does that make? I'm... I know what you mean, Clive. I know how you feel. But you... No, ah! No, there are no buts, Joe. All the buts are just excuses for not being like that. You know, I have a horrible feeling that this is the only place left in which I can be happy. Clive, if you go on talking like this, they'll never let you home. You really think so? Can't stain cheese. Why did you get it then? What, you think I had a choice? Those kitchens are like bloody dungeons. He's taking bigger bikes than us. It doesn't matter. That's enough, Archie. Pass it on. Well, you might as well finish it now. What's he doing here, anyway? In the bin, you mean? No, here with us. This is Archie. Well, I know that, but what's he doing here? He's keeping his company. Ain't you, Archie? Archie's all right. Just he doesn't say much, that's all. <gasps> Ask him about his mice. Mice? His pet mice. The ones he has at home. Tell me about your mice, Archie. Pretty good. Ask him about the colours. Colours? The colours! <clears throat> Do you have mice of different colours, Archie? Yeah. What do you mean? Green, some of them. Like grass, see? Green? How can you have green mice? Well, he paints them. What? Well, no, nah, not paints exactly. He uses air dyes. What, all over? Sometimes, all over. You like mice, don't you, Archie? 
Where are you going? Where's he going now? How should I know? Um, Yvonne. Charlotte. Charlotte? What's wrong with that? Well, nothing. Look, I have a problem. I'm beginning to wonder who I actually am. No, no, look, don't laugh. I'm serious. I mean, I thought I knew, you see. I did certain things at certain times. I knew they would come round again. And the repetition alone established a sort of identity. Well, now it's threatened, I suppose you could say. And it frightens me a bit. I'm not used to the space it's left. That's what I mean. You're a classic case, you are. Of what? Of suffering from advantages. Well, I don't feel very advantaged. Oh, Tommy, my love, how would you know? Private school, right, as a kid? Mm -hmm. Onto a public? Minor public. The art bleeds. Come on. Where are we going? There's a garden swing round the back of occupational therapy. You can push me. I suppose my life was a bit phony, really. But why? I mean, you don't stop being phony unless you know why, do you? I thought I was somebody else, you see. I thought I was the bloke that began the day with the bell on the clock and closed his eyes after the ten o'clock news. But you're not what you do, you know. I think that's what I've seen. What you do just happens to you. And it's balmy to take it seriously. One swing for the use of. Are we allowed? So what can they do but tell us to get off, eh? You push. Not too high, right? Whee! I suppose you were very underprivileged. My mum died when I was a kid. No big thing. My dad brought me up. It was great. Where's your father now? Prison. I see. No, you don't see Mr. Toffee Nose Clive. What have I said now? Christ, you're a baby, Tommy. They put him in prison because of me. Hello, Archie. Uh, what are you up to, eh? Mr. Pickett, have you been feeding Archie? Feeding? You know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. Archie is allergic to cheese. He says you gave him a sandwich. I can hardly cope with the guilt. You know the rules. Do you mean to say that there is actually a rule which says that you cannot eat cheese sandwiches on a Saturday afternoon? It's going on report. I'm not surprised. Would you, would you have to see Dr. Nethersell at 3.30? He's five minutes late, then. He's been delayed. Here he comes now, Mr. Piggott. Goody. Afternoon, Mr. Collins. Come on, Archie. Let's go to organised. Take a seat, Mr. Piggott. Please. Well, how are you feeling today? Feeling, anyway, here and there, you know. We're going to put you on a more specific course of treatment. It's from Monday. I think you'll find it helpful. It's really very simple. No problem, whatever. No problem for whom? This is our fifth meeting. Must we always play the same game? Do you know your class as being uncooperative? No, but it doesn't surprise me. Why is that? Well, look at it through my eyes. How can I cooperate? You want to turn me back into the person I was. I had to go mad to get away from that. Look, it's a new life I want, not the old one patched up. How can you honestly expect me to cooperate? I understand. 
I wish I could believe that. What I'm trying to impress upon you, Mr. Piggott, is that you are the only reality you're likely to find. But it's only going to make sense when you say so, you mean. Oh, I agree with you. That is the point at which I want to make a start. It's just that I always feel that my agreements are going to be used against me, you see, later on. You mean you don't trust me? Well, it's not that exactly. I hate watching people do good. It frightens me. Is that how I appear to you? I believe it's how you appear to yourself. And you find that? Unnerving. My doing good. Well, the motives involved generally cause so much harm, don't they? Your father died very young. He would have agreed with that. Ha ha. And your mother? Lived. Still doing it, in fact. Would you say that you loved your mother? Would you stop asking me about her if I said yes? Yes, yes, I suppose I did. We have the ideal relationship, really. Kindly. Parted by needs. The quick retreat behind a smile in emergencies. The usual thing. There were no conclusions to be drawn, you see. And that's always a great help, isn't it? Now, to tell you the truth, I think that they conspired against me. My wife and my mother conspired. Determined to make me happy, even if it made me miserable. I think that they decided fairly early on in the game that my own feelings on the subject nearly got in the way. I suppose I was barren soil, really. To be made fertile by the compost of their mutual understanding. Now, we don't seem to be getting very far, do we? Aren't we? Opposite sides of the fence, you see. You and I. The fence is only in your mind. Maybe. How do you see it, then? One of us has to win. You are not a loser. That's it. I'm sorry you feel that. Yes, I believe you are. But there it is. We'll see each other again on Monday, Mr. Piggott. A doctor? Yes? What precisely is this new treatment? It's a routine therapy, nothing you need worry about. No, I'd like to know. It's called ECT. We use a series of electrical oh, charges. Oh, no, no, with... no, no, come now. Mr. No, Piggott. No, not that. Mr. Piggott, relax. There's nothing to get excited about. You know how I feel about it, Joe. I can't take that. I mean, the pills and the cant, okay, maybe at a pinch, but... Oh, Christ, passing shocks through my head. You, you know how I feel about that. Well, what can I do? Well, see, Dr. Millam, for God's sake. I'm a voluntary patient here. They can't do it against my will. They, they need my permission. Or, at the very least, they need yours. Well, naturally, Mrs. Piggott, we would welcome your husband's permission. Even cooperation in whatever form of treatment may prove advisable. But I think uh, this is in his own best interest, you understand. We must waive such luxuries if it implies any obstruction to the overall therapy at hand. Dr. Millam, he has a very real horror of this one particular thing. He simply cannot bear the thought of, well, being used in that way. Oh, it's an initial reaction, perhaps. The long-term benefits are undeniable. I mean, we are talking about your husband's eventual return to health, I presume. Of course, I don't mean to appear... Well, isn't there an alternative, Doctor? With all due respect, we can hardly hold a referendum amongst the relatives of our patients every time we decide upon a specific form of treatment. Now, even if we did seek your opinion, see, on what basis could you form any valid judgment? Now, you approach this problem, uh, not unnaturally perhaps, but from a purely emotional angle. It's totally devoid of all clinical consideration. I don't deny that. But sometimes feelings must be allowed their say, surely. Mrs. Piggott, do I have to remind you that your husband is here because he attacked you with an axe? He didn't attack me. It was the kitchen table. And did he not say that he equated you with the furniture? Well, it, it was a figure of speech. Well, these figures of speech are often truths in disguise, believe me. I don't believe he ever meant me any harm. I'm sure of that. Well, perhaps you're right. But we can hardly take your mere intuition as a valid clinical assessment, now, can we? Now, realise our position, Mrs. Speaker. As physician in charge, I have to take full responsibility for your husband whilst he's here in our care. 
Dr. Miller, may I remind you, my husband is a voluntary patient in this hospital. Well, now, we think it advisable to place your husband under the protection of what we term a, a section. Now, in a sense, it protects him from the possible implications of his own condition. Well, naturally, we would require your permission. You haven't told me what this section is. Oh, it's really rather a formal way of saying that we would keep your husband here until we're fully satisfied of his complete return to health. But you need my permission. Naturally. And if I refuse? Mrs. Pigott, I must impress upon you the potential seriousness of your husband's condition. Now, we're not punishing him for that condition. Now, we are merely trying to find, with all the knowledge and experience at our disposal, a, a, a chink in his currently rather impregnable arm. Now, you suggest to me that you may wish to impede that treatment, I presumably on the grounds of your husband's phobia for a set form of treatment that has proved its usefulness in well, literally thousands of cases. There is some doubt, I believe, even in your own profession, as to just how effective this treatment can be, isn't that so? Oh, Mrs. Pigott. And that there are some potentially dangerous, even permanent, side effects. Confusion, loss of memory... Uh, Mrs. Pigott, I cannot, no, no, will not, enter into a discussion on the therapeutic value of a proven psychiatric technique. I personally have no need to defend such a therapy, and frankly, you are hardly in a position to decry its use. I do not give my permission, Doctor. I think uh, you've painted far too black a picture, you know. Uh, not that I altogether blame you, but uh, hmm? what it amounts to now is that you really make it very difficult for us to help. I'm not doubting your motives, Doctor. I know you're doing what you feel is best for Clive. It's just that I'm no longer convinced that you know what is best, you see. And when he spoke to me yesterday, there was real fear in his voice. I've never heard that before. Well, it frightened me. I can't let it go on. Well, the point is, Mrs. Bigger, that I have no real choice. I cannot release your husband until I think it is wise to do so. Wise? And we are keeping your husband in this hospital on the recommendation of two doctors. And he will remain here under that same recommendation. You mean he has no rights? I mean nothing of the kind. Uh, it sometimes happens that... Uh, well, the relatives of the patient concerned might feel that the medical recommendation is something with which they cannot personally agree. It happened. Which makes them wrong. Which puts us in the impossible position of being unable to treat perhaps a potentially dangerous patient simply because the next of kin are withholding their permission. I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me, Doctor. I want you to trust our judgment, Mrs. Bigger. Or what? If necessary, the law allows us to assume guardianship over your husband for the duration of his treatment. But I'm his wife. That makes me his nearest relative. I'm afraid it merely takes the jurisdiction of a county court to make it otherwise. But I don't believe that. If I don't agree with what you want, legally you can do without my agreement. Oh, now, that is the law, Mrs. Piggott. We merely follow its guidelines. I cannot demand my own husband's release. An application can be made, yes, of course. At which time he will be released? At our discretion. What does that mean? means that we are not obliged to comply with such a request, only to consider it. I asked you once whether I'd get my husband back. You told me only if he wants to come. Well, now, he wants to come. And he would. Well, I'm very sorry. Please. Please. When your husband is in a fit state to return home, nobody will be happier to see him return than I am. Oh, I, I want you to believe that. Just as I want you to see, that anything less would be a shirking of my responsibility to him as a patient.
know you're in there, Mr. Figure. Keeping quiet doesn't help. Come out now and it will save us all a lot of trouble. They'll bring a ladder, just like the last time. Mr. Pigger. Right. I'm going now. If you don't come out, I'm going for the others. You wouldn't want that now, would you? I arranged to meet my husband here. Have you seen a doctor? Oh, no, I've only just arrived. I see. Well, um, your husband's off visit for the time being, Mrs. Piggott. I'd have thought that he'd let you know, really. Saved your trip down. Oh, no, I, I wasn't told. Well, where's my husband now? He's resting, sleeping. Well, can I see a doctor? Is that possible? Oh, I should think I can rake you one up. Look, if you're going to the conservatory, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Mrs. Piggott, yes? uh, please don't get up. My name is Nethersall. How can I help you? I understand my husband is being refused visitors. Yes. Yes, temporarily that's so. We, we feel it advisable at this stage. But is he ill? No, no, no. He's resting. It's quite usual. He underwent therapy this morning. Shock therapy? ECT, yes. But they said, said it wasn't until tomorrow. I thought it was tomorrow. How is he? He's sleeping. If I wait, may I see him later when he wakes? I really wouldn't advise that, Mrs. Pickett. Well, tomorrow then. I mean, that's possible, sure. No, I'm sorry. Perhaps I haven't explained the situation as well as I might. Your husband is off visits for an indefinite period. You're telling me I can't see him at all? Is that what you're saying? For the time being only, in his own... Best interest, yes, I know. You must try and keep the matter in proportion, Mrs. Pickett. I know it isn't easy, but... So I so want to see my husband. I'm very sorry, but that's just not possible. I'll see what I can do about getting you a cup of tea. All right? I've been waiting for you. Why? You want to know about your husband, don't you? Are you a patient? No, I'm a resident. Why don't they let you see him? They put him on the old Wurlitzer. So you put up a fight, though. Oh, God, why did you have to tell me that? So you can see what's going on, that's why. Yeah, well, this is a hospital. Listen, they can do anything once you're in. I mean, well, sure, but what does that matter? You don't believe it, do you? I can't believe it's like that. I mean, there are drugs, aren't there? New treatments, and some people are helped. Oh, yeah. 
after your morning ration of happy tablets, you're not going to feel so depressed anymore. Of course not. Look, neither would you if you couldn't think, walk or see straight. Oh, the pills work. Nobody's saying that they don't. But they work for them, not us. Look, we're symptoms we are, and when they disappear, we do too. It can't be up like that. It just can't be. Who says it can't? Hey? Who else is there to say that it can't? Look, there's only one voice in here. Look, I don't know why you're here, and frankly, I don't particularly care. And my husband, he doesn't belong in a place like this. He's not sick. He's just tired. Came to the end of the road. Couldn't see it. I'm sorry. Oh, you're so helpless. There's nothing I can do. That depends. How do you mean? Look, you'll never beat them at their own game, that's for sure. Well, how then? How far would you go? I don't know what you mean. You want your husband out, don't you? I want him home, yes. Well, if we can get him out and keep him that way for a bit, he'll probably be okay. Look, short of raping a policewoman on duty, they won't want to know. If you do your bit on that side of the fence, then I'll do my bit here. You mean escape? Yeah. Yeah, if you like. I don't know. I'll suit yourself. Ursula. It, is it legal? For him? Well, sort of. As long as he lays low. For you, it's different. In what way? You could get the nick for up to two years. And what about you? What about me? The nick, too? Oh, I played insanity. Mad sent them uh, from the garden. Turnips. Organic. I hate turnips. Well, Clive likes them. Clive's not here, Martin. Oh, I don't know why I ever became a solicitor. Everything has to be set down in writing, you see. Would you like some tea? Mm, yes, yes, I think so. Thanks. Martin. Yes, I know, old girl. I'm coming to that. You know, it's a pity you didn't use that axe to rob a post office or something. Much easier if you'd ended up in prison. Uh, criminals have more rights. But surely the point is, what rights does he have? Well, in effect, they'll love just about as many as they think justified. I know, the proverbial sobering thought, isn't it? I don't understand. Well, the best I can make of it is that his rights are in direct proportion to just how willing he is to go along with what they decide is best for him. Yes, if he's not willing. Ah, there's your crunch. Everything starts to get whittled down from there on in. Sections, no visitors, all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's a legal maze, I can tell you. Thank God the bulk of our work's in conveyancing. Martin, I'm serious. Well, so am I, love. I mismatch of the day to plough through this ruddy lot. I can't get more serious than that. It was Liverpool at home. Well, <clears throat> if you want my opinion, it's a law basically designed to set aside the law as and whenever convenient. Don't quote me on that, but that's what it amounts to. Are you telling me Clive has no rights? I'm saying that as far as the usual procedures are concerned, you don't stand a chance. The act effectively bypasses the courts. We'd stand a much better chance under the old lunacy laws. At least there it took a magistrate to commit someone against their will. Well, you can't be saying there's nothing we can do. I just don't believe that. No, but it would be unfair to suggest anything would necessarily come of it, that's all. Look, Martin, if you weren't my brother-in-law and I came to you purely as a client, what would your advice be? Well, well, that's what I really want to know. I'd probably say persuade Clive to play the game. Learn what they want as quickly as he can and feed it back to them. Once convinced, they'll let him out. Yes, if he won't do that. Well, <clears throat> there is a process of appeal. Well, well, Clive could tell his side of things, you mean? Oh, ho, 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 ho. it doesn't follow, I'm afraid. They could refuse him permission to appear. The reins are entirely in their hands. He could appoint a solicitor to represent him, but even then I'd have to take my cue from them as to what I can tell Clive has happened. Theoretically, you could be kept in the dark about the whole thing. They can stop you from talking to your own client? If that's what they want. Oh. <clears throat> well, this is getting bizarre. Still, 
Might be worth a go. Hmm? Uh, only a handful of appeals are ever granted, you know. Basically, they simply uphold the medical opinion. Yes, but how long would it take? We couldn't apply until four weeks after their refusal to release him. Four weeks. I still think we should do it. If enough people protested, it'd be different, wouldn't it? Or wouldn't it? Well, it, it's a catch-22 situation, love. There's no legal aid for this one, you see. You need to be able to afford an appeal. Not that many can, in my experience. Straight answer, Martin. <clears throat> do you advise me to appeal or not? As a solicitor, yes, I do. And as a friend? What are our chances of getting Clive released? I'm afraid almost none at all. Look, have a long chat with Clive. Explain it to him. He'll see it. He's not a fool. Play it their way. It's the only way, Joe, believe me. And how do you suggest I get to see him? Nice piece of fish today, Mr. Pigot. Come along. Let's make a start, eh? Table tennis. So what? Go stamp, have you? Oh, look, sod off, will you? I've told you before. A postal order would do. Look, that won't get your car to Brixton, you silly bugger. Let alone Beverly bleed Nils Now get out! Lights to clear a bow every day. What's it then? Look, if anyone does come in, start chatting about that thing, right? <laughs> Nobody will know it's the difference anyway. Anyone spot you? No, I don't think so. Only they might wonder a bit. You not being able to see your old man like. Who's a soppy old potted plant then? <laughs> Ursula, I want to ask whether you'll help. I don't want to take it for granted. No, it's Stephanie. I'm sorry, I thought you. It, it, it don't matter. Go. On. It seems such an odd thing to be planning. I don't know why you're doing it. I'm not sure why I'm doing it. Maybe this place is rubbing off on you, eh? <laughs> Suddenly life's not all credit cards and double glazing. That's what Clive felt, wasn't it? He grew tired of just the appearance of things. It was stifling him, slowly. You too, probably. Only you was more willing to go along with it, see? Yeah. Well, perhaps I still am. What do you think? Am I? I wouldn't bet on it. Well, thanks for that, anyway. <laughs> 
I've spoken to a solicitor. Oh, they won't stick their necks it, out. It's my brother-in-law, actually. He thinks I should appeal. Look, for the time it takes them to turn you down, you could set the thing to music. Look, Tommy's on a section, right? So we get him out. Keep him that way for a bit. Look, if he stays out long enough, he's off the books. The only way they're going to get him back is to commit him. It's dodgy, that they won't bother. It's, it's, where would we go? Bogner. Bogner? I like Bogner. Well, why... I had an auntie who lived in Bogner, you know. <laughs> she used to keep the brass clean at the town hall. Look, anywhere would do. <sighs> you just get on a bus. They go all over, you know, Scotland even. Green line. You pay the driver as you get in. Shh. All right. We'll do Where's it. Daddy then? Where's my no. dad? No, I won't tell you again now. Shut up and keep out. Who is he? Someone else. How long have you been here? A little over a year, I suppose. Somewhere else before that. It's a career, really. I'm thinking of writing a good bin guide. A new family. Took me real home away, didn't they? Killed it, really. Now they can bloody well keep me. I'll remind them from time to time. Even files forget when nobody bothers to look at them. How old were you? Sixteen. Thereabouts. It was just me and me dad. Mum had gone then. We had a dog for a while. Benji. <laughs> Funny kid I was. I was waking up in the middle of the night. I never peed the bed though. They said I did, but I didn't. I'd run to me dad. Danny all. Take me into bed with him. Just lay against him and it'll go away. Yeah, well, I stayed in his bed, didn't I? It wasn't until I was nearly 15 that some nosy old care for a welfare twigged what was going on. When they took him away, they might as well have taken me too. Treated me as if I was a subnormal. Kept giving me tests with flipping wooden blocks to see what was best to do with me. I told them things were fine as they were. It was just how we both wanted it. They wouldn't believe me. They said he was doing me harm. I said to him, I said, how can you harm someone by making them happy? And after that, I thought, <laughs> sod it, eh? What's the point? If you can't join them, then beat them. Where's your father now? He's dead. Last year. He never was very healthy. I expect the prison nosh finished him off. I'd got myself happy in a way they hadn't thought up, see? They'll never let you get away with that one. Not going to get all sorry for me, are you? No, I'm not. No way. Why are you helping us like this? He's such a baby, old Tommy. He should be at home. It's no place for kids here. What about you? What will you do? Me? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll give the shrinks a cheap thrill and let them cure me. And I could send daft thank you notes to all the nurses. That'd crease them up. 
Of course I'm a soppy old potty plant, he says. So what? Tommy? Can you hear me, Tommy? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I can hear you all right. What have they done to you, Tommy boy? They keep giving me fish. Listen, Tommy, come here, come here. Do you want to go away somewhere? Away from here, eh? Look, we're going to take you away. Me and Archie and Josephine. We're going to put you in a car and take you someplace. Are we all going? No, Tom. No, me and Archie. Come here. Get up. Come on. Ersie. Come over here. Listen. After breakfast tomorrow, I want you to take a walk. Just like today, right? Only I want you to go down by the swing. You remember the swing, don't you, Tommy? The swing. Not too high. Whee! Mm. Listen, Tommy. I want you to wait for me there. I don't know when I can come, right? But I want you to wait. You remember that, won't you, Tommy? Can I sit on the swing? Yeah. Yeah, of course you can. You can do anything you like after tomorrow. to me. Do you remember me saying not to bring them? I said we no. don't need flipping shovels and things, Archie. I told you before. We pulled the thing out. Gardening. We're not gardening. Oh. Christ, that Percy Thrower has a lot to answer for. Come on, Tom. Hello. Uh. They're nice, Archie. Pretty good. Look, when you two have finished gardening club, maybe we can get started, eh? Come on, Tommy. Up you get. That's it. That's a good boy. Hold me hands. Come on. Hurry up, Archie. Come on. Gardening! Look, we're not gardening. We're not gardening out, come on! Ouch! Jesus, I took on something with you two. Where the heck is your missus, Tommy? She should have been here by now. Time. You mean we haven't got a watch between us? Oh, great. This job is going to go down in the annals of organised bloody crime, this is. Look at us. I ask you. Snow White and the two bloody dwarfs. Sleep here with his pick and shovel and... <coughs> hey! Hey, there she is! Archie, get pulling. No, Archie, no! Use your hands, lad. Pull it up. Pretty good. I know it is, Arch. I'm not saying it isn't. Look, it's great for motorways and even treasure and things like that. But not for edges that have to be pulled up before we all land in the bleeding nick. Now, Arch, 
you please? Mm. Good boy, Arch. That's it, pull it. Passwords is help. Hello. Nervous? Oh, petrified. Not to worry. It's really like clockwork. The next head to appear will belong to your dearly beloved. If it gets stuck, you pulling it for all you're worth, right? Over and out. There. Push, Archie. That's it, go on. Hello, darling. Welcome home. Is that our car? All ours. Come on. Jump in. Quickly, sit down. All present and correct, then. Thank you, Stephanie. Fiona. Bless you, Fiona. Get the LA out of here before the cavalry arrive. Hey, Tommy. Isain. And Warren. That's my real name. Not much, is it? Hey? Bloody Ain. I ask ya. I like Anne. Bye, Tommy. Silly old bugger. You look after yourself, do you hear? Jesus, the Castalpo. Pick him back up. Ready? Pretty good. <laughs> 